we are going to attempt the questions which are the most difficult in the examination but they are quite easy sometimes because they are in order and most of the time particularly if they are given in passage number one so then most of the questions they will be in order so for this purpose we have selected a passage number one from book nine and it is test number three it is regarding attitudes to language so when we come across this type of questions first of all underline the difficult words or the keywords not difficult rather keywords important words and after underlining them we are going to scan them in this type of questions first of all just look for synonyms number one secondly look for qualifiers qualifiers mean the words like some few very or we can also call them extreme words okay for example if i say that i eat bread every day so every is an extreme word which shows that i do this action every day so just be careful of these types of words then if the your keywords your state when you come across a statement in the passage so just uh, you have to compare the both statement if both statements are true in all respect respect regarding keywords regarding synonyms then the answer is yes if they are not similar the answer is no and if there is uh, if you see that the question your answer is maybe okay so the answer like you know maybe and when you are not sure so that answer is not given in the passage so uh, after underlining the keywords now we decide that which is the easy uh, question to find i think prescriptive uh, uh, prescriptive grammar then prescriptivism so it, this is all about you know grammar so that is why i don't think that they are useful so that we will start right right from the beginning and the here is arguments our keywords is argument so just we are going to find out the word argument in the passage so let's start here in the first argument here in the first paragraph here and when opinions what do you think about op opinions opinion is an synonym words of arguments or no yes sir yes. yes so opinions is a word which says that this is the word related to arguments so we are sure that we will find the answer of question number one here so just in uh, underline the statement and just put one so you are going to find the answer here and when opinions differ emotions can run high so he is talking about language language okay high arguments can start at easily over minor points minor means small so go back to your question it says that what is your question uh, there are understandable reasons why arguments occur about language so here you know the argument starts here say arguments can start as easily so this answer in my opinion is yes or no yes very good so the answer of this question is yes so you can write here in a box here there is a text box here yeah you can write the answer is yes now we come to the next question what next question says next question says that people feel more strongly about language education than about small differences in languages so feel more strongly about language education and differences so education and differences go back and look for the keywords in the passage number two moreover is a public behavior 
not part of society or social behavior is ling linguist factors influence how we judge personally educational standards job okay as a result easy hurt so we didn't find anything in paragraph number two not, and not given. okay no not given we not given no we are not sure whether it is given or not first of all we are going to find out the question or the keywords what are our keywords oh. here feel more yeah, our feeling more strongly length we our yes. keyword is language education and small differences so language yes. education and small differences where is language education language yes. Linguistic is used. Linguistic factors influence how we judge personally. Okay. Social status, educational standards. No, it is most general sense. Prescriptivism is the view of variety of language has. The view is produced no. written language, especially. So go back what we are looking for language belongs to everyone so most people feel they have a right to hold an opinion about it and when opinions differ emotions can run high arguments can start as easily over minor points of usage as over major policies of linguistics education so here again in the first paragraph linguistic education it is talking about linguistic education so go back to your question what it says people feel more strongly about language education than about small differences in language usage so here language usage you know here it says that or uh, here people feel they have a right to hold an opinion about it and when opinions differ emotions can run high arguments can start as easily as over minor points of users as over major policies of linguistic so it says that here look at the this this last line what it says arguments can start here just underline the word arguments yes this is right given no, it, it is given but whether we are we need to find out whether it is yes or no okay so just compare this yes. compare this sentence to the last one arguments can start easily over minor points minors means here synonym of uh, look at the question here it says yes. that small differences so minor points means small differences okay people feel more strongly about language education than about small differences it means that the question says that people feel more about the teaching of language not about the little differences little differences can be ignored this is what he is saying now read the this statement argument can start yet easily over minor points so minor points of usage as over major policies of linguistics education okay and when opinions differ emotions can run high so it means that Uh, so it should be yes or no? No. It should be no because it doesn't say that only people feel strongly only about language, not uh, only minor point. Yes. It says that Staying both arguments. arguments. It is it is stating about arguments. So arguments can be minor or low. Okay, in both cases, people they just so the our answer. Is no over here, okay? And this is question number two. Just write two, and the, the answer of two is no. Now come to question number three. What it says? Our assessment of person's intelligence is affected by the way he or she uses language. Our assessment of person's intelligence. So we are going to find out the word intelligence more ever is more public behavior is it different usage to noted the over criticism no party of society of social behavior is exempt linguistic factors here it says that 
uh, underline this word linguistic factors uh, here we are going to underline it linguistic factors influence how we judge personality so we'll judge what is the synonym of judge look at the question assessment so a, a judge is a synonym word of judge isn't it so over assessment of a person intelligence is affected by the way he or she uses language so let's see what this sentence says it says that linguistic factors linguistic factors means the use of language influence how we judge personality intelligence social status educational standards job aptitude and many other areas of identity and social survival as a result it is easy to hurt and to be hurt when language use is unfeelingly attacked so it the answer what it says it says that people judge through their language ability our assessment of person intelligence is affected by the way he or she uses language so is affected means they are they suffer here in the last sentence of paragraph number 2 as a result it is easy to hurt then to be hurt when language use is unfeelingly attacked so what does what is the meaning of this last sentence so the, the, the if it is uh, similar to your question or no the last sentence over assessment of a person's intelligence is affected by the way he or she uses language so if a person is using language okay uh, according to our belief then we appreciate him if he is not you know using the language then he may criticize him then his feeling will be hurt so according to the last line the answer of question number 3 is yes or true what it says true or false or not given what it what it says yes so it is yes here is yes but here it is a yes no not given okay now come to question number 4 what question number 4 says question number 4 is prescriptive grammar books cost a lot of money to buy in the 18th century over keyword is prescriptive grammar and 18th century so where can you find the word 18th century so here uh, the paragraph okay you are saying it is on fourth paragraph okay and not nothing in here they view the especially in relation to grammar if you look at question paragraph number 3 it talks about grammar yes uh, mm. grammar just underline the word in relation to grammar and vocabulary and frequently uh then is there anything about the grammar books no here in third paragraph it is written the it, view is founded very good 18th century approach to the writing grammars and dictionaries the aims of these early grammarians were threefold they wanted to codify the principle of this is one okay and Previous, what is uh, paragraph third paragraph look here it is written here the view is uh, grammar and vocabulary the which line uh, third line the view third paragraph third line okay the view is propounded especially in relation to grammar this is what you are saying hmm. yes and vocabulary and frequently with reference to pronunciation the variety which is favored in this account is usually a version of the standard written language especially as an counter to literature so it does it talks about grammar or language or vocabulary a uh, similar to here grammarians what were their aims so it does not say anything about the cost about the price of the grammar books yeah. so that is why i think that the 18th century okay. we can write here it our answer number 4 would be here 
okay we can write number 4 here whether it is yes or no we will leave it till to the end now we go to question number 5 okay because we didn't find anything when we didn't find anything it means that the obviously the answer is not given but we will okay. leave it till the end okay here question number 5 says prescriptivism still exists today so look at the word prescriptivism here can you find the word prescriptivism look at quest paragraph number 4 nothing is there here prescriptively it says studied the grammar okay so here if you underline the word Uh, the main language uh, studied prescriptively so studied prescriptively is a synonym word of prescriptivism in 18th century what is our question our question says that prescriptivism still exists today okay whether it is in practice today or not the main language have been studied prescriptively especially in 18th century okay in order to improve the authoritarian nature some usage of prescribe to learn it is not talking about today these are okay are still with us look at this one this the first line these attitudes are still with us which attitude this in the previous paragraphs he talks about prescriptive grammar and here in the last paragraph he says that these attitudes attitudes means these thinking or this uh, it still you know attitudes means prescriptivism are still with us still with this us means the answer is yes look at the question okay five is a prescriptivism still exists today are still with the, with us means they still exist with us here the answer of this is question number 4 is so question number 5 is yes okay now we go back to question number 6 what it says question number 6 says that according to descriptivists it is pointless to try to stop language change so look at the word descriptivists okay so our so next paragraph here who's rudiments yeah here yeah descriptive no it p in okay nevertheless there is a alternative point of view that is encoded less than standard with the fact of linguistic usage the approach is okay summarized in the statement that it is a task of grammar to describe not prescribe to record the effects of linguistics okay not attempt to possible task okay what is what is your, what is your keyword six descriptivist it is it is pointless to try to stop language change so where can you find the word descriptivist is here in our time the descriptivist the opposition between descriptivist okay underline the word here the last paragraph the here it is the yes. last last paragraph this often become extreme just one second here descriptivist and prescriptivist has often become extreme both sides painting unreal pictures of the other descriptive grammar have been presented as people who do not care about standards so it means that because of the way they see all forms of usage are equally valid underline this words all forms of usage as equally valid so here go to your question it says according to descriptive it is pointless to try to stop language change so it says that language change okay all forms of uses as equally valid so as they are equally valid so they do not care about standards 
So it says that they next are. Next line also. Next line also. This prescriptive grammatarians. So we are we are talking about descriptive. So here it is in the uh, next line talks about the prescriptive grammarians. Okay, here says okay. Prescriptive grammarian have been presented as blind ad adherents to historical tradition. So here you are right. Yes. So they, they are to me. So uh -huh. prescriptive wish they believe that there should be no change in grammar, whereas no, descriptive wish no. they are open. Okay, they accept uh -huh. that the language must be changed. So all forms of language uh -huh. usage as equally valid. So descriptive is yes. think that the language is valid. The answer of this question would be no. What? What? How? No. According to descriptive, it is pointless to try to stop language change. Language change means it means that the language, you know, prescriptive is they believe that there should be no language change. Language should be standard, whereas descriptive. Which they say that in the paragraph, all forms of language are valid. So there is no point to stop language change. Language change is a natural phenomenon. So the answer of question number six, in my opinion, is yes. Here the answer is number six is here. Uh, the last paragraph. The answer is. Here it is, rather it is here. Six is, yes. Now look at question number seven and eight. What question seven says? Descriptivism only appeared after 18th century. Okay, here, 18th century. The last paragraph. In our own time, the opposition between has extreme with okay, descriptivism. Descriptive grammarian have been presented as people who do not care about standards. So they do not care about standards because of the way they see all forms are equal. Okay. So just leave this question a little bit for a while and we come to question number last one then we will come back to question number seven. Both descriptivist and prescriptivist have been misrepresented. Here look at the last paragraph. Uh, descriptive grammarian have been presented as people. Both sides painting unreal pictures of the others has been become extreme. In our last paragraph, in our own time, the opposition between descriptive uh, has often become extreme with both sides painting unreal pictures of the other. So both sides, they are presenting unreal pictures. Just underline here. Just one second. Unreal pictures of the other descriptive grammarians have been presented as people who do not care about standard. Okay. The opposition has even been presented in quasi politician terms of radical liberalism as elitist conservatism. Uh, yes. Have been presented as people who do not care. Okay. This answer is you are saying yes. So they are, so it says that with both sides painting unreal pictures. So they are misunderstood. Yeah. The question of number eight is yes. Okay. Yeah. Number eight is yes. Now we come back to question number seven. Descriptivism only appeared after the 18th century. 18th century. Here, instead of the custom of speaking, no, in our own time, the opposition, it is, it is our own time. Okay, after 18th century, here, okay, and do not attempt to impossible task of the evaluating language variation of halting language change in the second half of the 18th century. 
we already find advocates of this view. So here, this view means the descriptive grammar. Here, in the previous paragraph, it talks about the descriptive grammar and it appeared in the second half of the 18th century. Just underline this word. Second half of the 18th century means not after 18th century. Sec in the second half of the 18th century, descriptive, descriptive grammar came, appeared after 18th century. It says 18th century, whereas the answer is after, uh, in the middle of the 18th century, so the answer of this question is no. Here, the answer of, they are not in order. So this is number seven. It says no. And the last one, number four, as I told you earlier, it would be not given. It would be not given. Yeah, we can write here, not given. So this is all for today. So just try to remember, try to find out these keywords, then synonyms, then look for the extreme words here, look particularly here, especially in the 18th century, okay? Uh, in the middle of the 18th century or not after the, you know, 18th century. So uh, I think you and get some clear view about these type of questions and I hope that you will do your exercise. So see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.